In Psalm 11, we find the Bible says, In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For lo, the wicked bend their bow, they make ready their arrow upon the string, that they may privily shoot at the upright in heart. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple, the Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. The Lord tried the righteous, but the wicked, and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. Upon the wicked shall, uh, upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness; his countenance doth behold the upright. Let's pray, Father. Thank you for the good singing. Lord, I'm glad my sins are gone. Glad to have been washed in the blood of Christ. I'm glad to never be remembered anymore. And God, we're grateful for that tonight. We're thankful for the good testimonies. We're thankful to be able to be in the house of God tonight. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the precepts of it, the promises of it. And Lord, thank you that we can certainly embrace it and we can hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. Now, I pray that you would encourage and edify your people. I pray that you would enlighten us and help us to glean from thy truths that we might truly live a righteous life in this lost and dying world. Bless now, use this unworthy vessel and help your people. We'll thank you for it, for it's in the holy name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Amen. I, I'd just like to outline these verses for you. And look at the instruction. We notice, first of all, verse number one, faith. He says, in the Lord uh, put I my trust. Uh, can I say, without faith, it's impossible to please God. God honors faith. God is looking for faith. He's given to every man a measure of faith. Uh, and he is looking for us to act on that faith uh, and to grow that faith. So then faith cometh by hearing. Uh, hearing by the word of God in this psalmist uh, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of uh, uh, being sought after, uh, he said, uh, come what may, uh, I'm going to trust in the Lord. Uh, it would be a good day in your life when you settle that in your soul, that regardless of your circumstances, uh, regardless of your obstacles, regardless of what you're facing, uh, you're just going to look toward heaven uh, and trust God to help and sustain your life. Uh, it amazes me in this day and age uh, how many folks can trust God to take them to heaven, but they can't trust God to get them through your, their problems. I'm glad my God's big enough, aren't you? We see faith. In verse number two, we find the foe. He says this. Uh, 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 he says, For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string that they may privily shoot uh, at the upright in heart. Uh, can I say, uh, uh, we have a foe. We know we uh, have an enemy. We know the devil. The Bible says over there in First Peter, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, uh, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. We do have a wicked de devil as a foe. He hates you. He hates everything about you. Uh, he hates the church. He hates the Bible. He hates uh, good godly singing. He hates everything that we stand for. But can I say, he's not the only enemy you have. Can I say there are people that you work with or work around? There are neighbors that you have. There are folks in the community. There are folks all around you that knows that you love Jesus. And because of their wicked life, they seek to see you destroyed. Hmm? Every day you live for Jesus, you're an indictment against them. Sure. But if they can get you to blow your testimony, then they can say, ah, oh, nothing to it. So they are constantly needling you at you. They are constantly uh, 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 shooting arrows at you to destroy your life. They'll spread lies on you. They'll tell tales on you. They'll try to do anything to discourage you. There is a foe. We see faith. We see the foe. Notice the foundations in verse number 3. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Jesus said it this way. A house that's built upon sand... When the winds come, the waves come, it'll sink. And what you're built on is greatly important. And if your foundations be shaken and destroyed, what do you have to stand on? 
what are you going to do? Then we see the Father. Look in verse number 4. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold his eyelids, behold his eyelids try the children of men. Notice some things about the Father. First of all, he's seated. Look what it said. His throne is in heaven. Hmm? He's in his holy temple and his throne is in heaven. The Lord is seated. The Lord is in control. The Lord is on his throne. He is omnipotent. He is omniscient. Uh, 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 he's all-knowing, all-powerful, and he's um, uh, omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time. Uh, never make mistakes to think that God's fallen asleep somewhere. Sure. The Lord is seated. Can I say the Lord does see? He sees everything. Look what it says. Uh, 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 his throne's in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids try the children of men. Can I say God sees? He sees everything. Can I say this? He not only sees, he's keeping a record. Yes, sir. He knows when you overcome. He knows when you fall short. He knows when there are enemies uh, uh, seeking to destroy you. He knows when there are snares laid before you. God sees it all, my dear friend. Amen. And God sees what's in your heart. Hmm. We also see that he separates. Look at verse 5. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked in him that loveth violence his soul hateth. God separates or God distinguishes. It's a benefit and a blessing to belong to God. We're in his family, but he does try what's in our heart. He does try our faith. He does try uh, uh, all the things about us to improve our lives to make us get closer to him. But those that don't know God, the wicked, the unrighteous, God says that his soul he hateth. Hmm? God's angry with the wicked every day, the Bible says. And then we see his fury in verse number 6. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and in horrible tempest this shall be the portion of their cup. You know why you ought to have a desire to pass out tracts and a desire to uh, win folks to God and a desire to invite folks to church and a desire to be a witness on your job, a desire for your loved ones to get saved because verse 6 is their plight without God. Doesn't sound like anything I want to see in my friends or family face. Hmm? The fury of God. Hmm. Fire, brimstone, snares, horrible tempests. I, I don't want to see that on anybody, do you? Now here's what gets me. We say we, 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 we believe that Jesus wants to save folks, but we never give out any tracts. We say we're not Calvinists, but we act like Calvinists because we don't ever do anything to see God win anybody to himself. We sit back and expect God to do all the work. Why do you think he saved you and I? Hmm? And then we see in verse number 7, if you will, his fondness. Look what he says. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. God loves righteousness because he's righteous. And when you and I overcome and live the Bible way, God loves the life that we live. I want God to be fond of me, don't you? I'm interested in verse number 3. The Bible says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Now, I want to preach for just a few minutes on this thought, if the foundations be destroyed. Hmm? Now, can I say, it don't make, take much to destroy some people's foundation because they don't have much of one. Amen. Some people's spirituality is so thin, it's sad. It don't take much. For the cookie to crumble. But when we're talking about in the context of this verse, he's talking about things that have been staples, things that lives have been built upon. What are the righteous going to do if those foundations be destroyed? I got to thinking about the foundations that he's talking about. The foundations of, uh, uh, of our country. Do you realize that as we sit here right now, the very uh, 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 precepts that America was founded upon, and by the way, if you're a student of history, America was founded on the precepts and oracles of God. 
America was founded on uh, Christian precepts and Christian thoughts uh, and America was uh, sought to be a godly nation that feared God and reverenced God uh, and all of our laws were taken from uh, 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 the Judean law and the Christian law. Everything about America was based upon what thus saith the Lord. But America today doesn't resemble that. The very foundation and core of America is under attack every day. I'm thankful some of you are going to the Capitol on, on Friday. That would be a blessing to let them know. Uh, there are some that do know what this country was founded on. There are some that do know what the Commonwealth of Kentucky was founded on. Uh, and there are some that are not going to back up based on what some politician says. Can I say our, our very government is at stake. Do you realize that we have an election coming up this year? And do you realize that the party that's not in power, if you don't know who that is, the Democrats, every candidate that they are running right now in these primaries, every one of them have refused to denounce socialism. Do you know what America was found, founded upon? A democracy. We came out of England because we wasn't going to have a king rule over us. Uh, we came out to give the power back to the people. Uh, and America was founded on uh, every individual that's a citizen of this country has a voice, uh, has an opinion that counts, uh, and everyone should have to vote, uh, and the people's vote should rule in this country. But you've got a party that's uh, basing everything against what, what this nation was founded upon. Do you realize that party wants to take every hard-earned dollar that you make and give it to folks that don't make any money? Hmm? Do you realize that Warren and Bernie Sanders' proposal to run our country for what they want to do, all their give me programs, they would tax you 90% of what you make? And their programs, Miss Mary, would cost $100 trillion a year. You know how much the government gets? Now, Miss Billy don't get it all, but she gets a good portion of it working for the IRS. <laughs> Our government only raises $4 trillion a year. $4 trillion, $100 trillion. Who's paying for it? Hmm? Oh, yeah, let's give free health care. Let's give free college. Let's give free this. Let's give free that. Let's give free... There's only one problem. It comes at a price. Now, I'm a Bible believer. America's going to come to that eventually. Because the only way America's going into a one world government, America's government can't exist anymore. Right now, we've got the greatest economy that America's ever had. You put one of them jokers in office, and you watch it change quickly and abruptly. What happens if the foundations of our government be destroyed? They've, they've been attacked for generations. We kicked God out of the government a long time ago. And I want to tell you something. The seat of Satan in America is in Washington, D.C., there are some wicked people up there. Some of them jokers who are running, some of them jokers who are involved in that impeachment, they show videotapes uh, of just a few years saying the direct opposite of what they're saying right now. They talk out of both sides of their mouth. They don't care if they're caught in a lie. They don't care about anything except them staying in power. And if you think for a minute that they care what you and I think, you got another thing coming. Hmm? What happens if our government's foundations are destroyed? Not only our country, how about our communities? Do you realize our communities are being destroyed? Do you realize in our communities there are things that go against nature and there are things that go against the Bible? There are things that go against community standards uh, 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 that have been in place for a couple hundred years. Now all of a sudden they've been destroyed, washed away, and they expect you and I to accept it. Hmm? The community says it's okay to have a baby completely born, taking its breath, eating its first meal, and then you can decide whether or not to end its life. And they're okay with that. Hmm? 
Can I say the Bible says uh, 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 the Lord told Jeremiah uh, uh, that, uh, that he formed him in the belly uh, of his mother and that he knew him when he formed him in the belly. Hmm? You say, when does life begin? When conception takes place. The community says, ah, you can murder them anytime you want to. And when they get up to be about teenagers, sometimes you think about murdering them, but it's a little late then. <laughs> can I say this? Community now says it's okay for homosexuals to be married. Say it's okay for that. And if that wasn't gross enough, it's okay now to teach these little kids that if they're not comfortable being a little boy or a little girl, just go ahead and start giving them hormones and let them change their gender. And now the schools start in first grade teaching about having two mommies and two daddies and also about changing their sex. Hmm? The community says that's okay. Let them be what they want to be. Well, there's just a real problem with that because they are what God made them. And can I help you with something? Uh, from the beginning, God made man and then he made a woman out of man and a woman completes the man. Uh, nowhere in Scripture, nowhere does God ever accept, uh, but yet rather he just uh, uh, judges harshly uh, 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 any attempt of a man being with a man or a woman being with a woman. The community says, oh, we're building up a new foundation. Hmm. I didn't watch it, but I understand that the Super Bowl had several commercials with open homosexuals in it. You can't hardly watch a TV show without homosexuals in it. And can I say many more commercials are coming out and playing that part and playing that role and all kinds of things. What is it doing? It's destroying the foundations of the home, of the family, uh, of what it takes in order for God to be pleased. Amen. Uh, uh, you can't take two men and make a baby. Now you can get around it all you want to, and you can you can uh, you can talk to me till you're blue in the face. You'll never convince me if you let uh, homosexuals adopt a child. They won't raise that child to be a homosexual. Right. And the things that that child will be exposed to go against nature. Yeah. Sure. What will the righteous do if the foundations be destroyed? The foundations are being destroyed in our country. They're being destroyed in our communities. Matter of fact, there's been one bill that already went down. There's another bill that's going to be kicked to the Supreme Court whether or not our churches have to marry homosexuals. We already got it in our bylaws, and bless God, I'll go to jail before I ever marry one. Hmm? Not going to happen. Hmm? Bless God, I'll lock the doors, wouldn't let them in. Bless God, if I go to jail, you better burn the place down before you let anybody get married in here to homosexuals. Huh? It goes against the word of God. God doesn't just call it a sin. God calls it an abomination. Hmm. Well, I don't know what I got on that, but I did. What about the foundations of the church? Being destroyed right before our eyes. Hmm? What used to be considered holy and pure nowadays is considered old-fashioned and archaic. Nowadays, there's no distinction by, by who they allow to stand behind the pulpit anymore. Used to be it had to be a God-called man. Now they let females behind the pulpit, even though the Bible says that a woman shouldn't usurp authority over the man. Even though the Bible says let a woman be silent in the church. They'll let women get up and teach and preach. Ha ha. They'll let homosexuals stand in pulpits and proclaim their gospel. Mm -mm. Can I say, uh, uh, used to churches had music that honored God. Today, there are churches that have music that honors the world and Satan. I don't know about some of y'all. Every time I get on contemporary Christians, some of you, you know, oh, Brother Doug's old-fashioned. Well, you hang on on this one. I've been trying to warn you for years, and you let your kids listen to that junk, and you listen to that junk, and you go and pay your money to hear that junk. I want to tell you, anybody hear of a group called Hillsong? Hillsong. I'm glad you don't know who that is. Thank you, Brother Clint. That's why you're allowed to sit on the front row. Huh? 
Yeah, there's a group called Hillsong. Hillsong, one of their active members of their group, are you ready? Is a Muslim. Now you know it's not Christian if a Muslim's singing it. Hmm? We have ungodly music, ungodly people. They've changed the word of God. They no longer use the word of God. The one that God wrote, to, uh, they're dumbing down the book. They're dumbing down the foundations. Everything's eroding away. Churches don't have service on Wednesday anymore. Don't have service on Sunday night anymore. Uh, uh, they just come and go through the motions. Uh, they do everything they can to get a crowd. Uh, and my dear friends, you know what? To get a crowd, uh, the power of the Holy Ghost moving. Uh, uh, God speaking to hearts. Uh, folks getting right with God. Uh, Hey, we need revival. We don't need uh, uh, to regenerate the church. We've come up with all kinds of things to make the church more popular. And the church is looking more and more like the world. And the foundations are being destroyed. In the weeks to come on Wednesday night, we're going to be teaching on Baptist distinctions. So you know what this book says, why we are what we are. So what do we do? What do the righteous do if the foundations be destroyed? You don't have to be a brain surgeon or rocket science to figure out our country's being eroded, our communities are being eroded, our churches are being eroded. Yes, sir. I'm talking about Baptist churches. No longer resemble Baptist churches. Well, what do we do? Well, can I say, first of all, the righteous are to contend. Yes, sir. Book of Jude, verse 3 says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. He writes of a common salvation, but yet there are many who claim it but don't have it. He said you must earnestly contend for the faith. Uh, the faith that Jesus taught, the faith that the apostles taught, uh, the faith that has been handed down uh, through generation to you and I, we are responsible uh, to keep carrying the torch. Uh, we are responsible to stand up for the pure and the right. Uh, we are responsible, uh, my dear friends, to let people want to know what thus saith the Lord. Uh, we're to contend for it. Hmm? We're not to let it go by easily. Right. We're not to go down without a fight. Where to contend for what thus saith the Lord. I appreciate she said she was proud to marry America. I'm proud to be American. Uh, I believe in standing for the pledge of the flag. Uh, I believe in the Constitution of the United States. Uh, and what we've witnessed out of our government the last six months uh, has been spitting on the Constitution. Uh, hey, I'm for the Constitution. I'm for patriotism. Uh, and friend, when we quit being patriots, we see what happens in our government. I will give you a little good news. Somebody want some good news? Yes. Amen. You won't see this on, on CNN. You know, last night was the New Hampshire primary. That's the first primary of the election season. I was the first caucus, and they split up their delegates because Iowans are weird. But anyway, New Hampshire primary of incumbent presidents who, who, who won re-election New Hampshire, Reagan got 65,000 votes. Clinton got 50-something thousand votes. Obama got 40-something thousand votes. Do you know what President Trump got last night? 120,000 votes. He got almost double what Reagan got. Do you remember when Reagan got reelected? <clears throat> Thank you. It's good to see somebody else old. <laughs> huh? Let me help you some. Landslide. 49 states. Huh? I'm here to tell you. No, everybody thought it was crazy. Nobody believed me when I told Trump was winning the last time. Huh? I, I called it in June. Because I was watching the rallies. Hillary Clinton, they'd have to be plastered on her face because they couldn't show. There was only a thousand people sitting there. Yeah. Trump turns away tens of thousands every time he speaks. They said of all the people that came to hear them uh, uh, Democrats in their rallies, Trump turned away more people than they all put together come to hear them folks. Hmm? Said Biden had about 600 people. And they bust in most of them. 
That's true. Huh? He'll be out soon. He done lost his marbles. Huh? I'm just trying to help you with something. We are to contend for those things that are right. We're not to contend, contend for tradition. We're to contend for what's right, the foundations, what things we're built upon. When the foundations are destroyed. We're to, we're to contend. Say, I'm not backing up. This is what we stand on. Hmm? Can I say, say, and by the way, y'all can think politics is a joke or something. If you want America to be what America's always been, you better pray and God gives us another space of grace. If Trump wouldn't have put in them two uh, Supreme Court justices, you realize most of everything that, that, that I've just preached against would already be law? You don't see those in the news either, but they just turned over another abortion thing the other day. Mm -mm. I'm telling you, we need to pray he gets back in because there's a chance he can put two more in. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh? How do you contend? Nothing wrong with praying. Sure. Amen. Can I say this? The righteous are to contend. Can I say secondly, the righteous are to have confidence. Amen. What did the psalmist say? What did David say in verse number one? In the Lord put I my trust. I don't trust Donald Trump. I don't trust any of them Democrats. I don't trust any politicians. I don't, you know what I trust? I trust the Lord. Amen. He'll never lie to you. And he does all things well. <clears throat> Solomon said in Proverbs 3, you know this verse, verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, he shall direct thy paths. Uh, Psalms 9.10 says, uh, And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them uh, that seek thee. Uh, Psalms 18, verse 2, Miss Brandy Psalm, uh, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, uh, my God and my strength in whom I will trust uh, my buckler and the horn of my salvation in my high tower mm. what are we going to do we're going to have confidence we're going to just trust the Lord uh, I'm just going to believe in him stand in the things of him it'll be alright what will the righteous do we're to contend we're to have confidence but we're also to be careful for nothing Philippians 4 6 says be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. When he says be careful for nothing, that means be, don't be careless. Don't just let everything happen by chance. For years I've heard Christians say, well, why should I vote? It doesn't matter anyway. It does matter. Hmm? And we're in the mess that we're in because Christians quit being Christian. When it first came up about taking prayer out of schools, well, it's going to, we're not supposed to be involved in politics, says who? Well, you wasn't. We lost prayer in schools. By the way, Trump has instituted that, and the Supreme Court just upheld that our kids can't have prayer in school. You don't hear that on CNN either. Hmm? Oh, we can't have prayer in school. We can't get involved in this. I remember going to the county fair in 72 when they were bringing up abortion and bringing up Roe versus Wade and Christians didn't get involved. And nearly 50 million babies have been aborted legally since, not knowing how many illegal ones. And now they got the day after pill. So who knows? What I'm telling you is we're not to be careless. We're not to let just things happen. We're to be careful. We're to let everything through prayer and thanksgiving, let our requests be made known to God. Yes. We're to pray about these things. Seek God on these things. Can I say the most powerful force in the world is not nuclear power. It's Christians getting a hold of God. Yes, sir. And we do not do that enough. What are the righteous to do when the foundations are being destroyed? We're to stay close to the cross. old hymn near the cross there's something about being close to cross to the cross why when you're when you're close to the cross then you're upright when you're upright God loves those that are upright famous preacher of year gone by Samuel Rutherford said this the cross of Christ is the sweetest burden that I ever bore it is such a burden as wings are to a bird or sails to a ship to carry me forward to my harbor the cross will get you where you need to go, friend. That's why we need to stay close to it. Uh, Oswald Chambers said this, Our Lord's making of a disciple is supernatural. He does not build on any natural capacity of ours uh, at all. 
God does not ask us to do the things that are naturally easy for us. He only asks us to do the things that we are perfectly fit to do through His grace. And that is where the cross we must bear will always come. Charles Spurgeon said this, There are no crown wearers in heaven who were not cross bearers here below. God help us to stay near the cross. When we see the, the foundations being destroyed, the verse Jesus told that rich young ruler, take up thy cross and follow me. My dear friends, we're to be cross bearers. We're to stay near the cross. We're to be close to the Lord when the foundations are being destroyed. And then let me say this lastly. When the foundations are being destroyed, what are the righteous to do? We're to be concreted in. Paul wrote 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. We're to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. It's my understanding. I haven't listened to it yet. Brother Josh preached on uh, part of his message this Sunday. was been faithful, only to hear that the crowd was anemic Sunday night. Don't tell me the foundations aren't being destroyed. Hmm. Commitment says, I'll do whatever I have to do. Indifference just makes excuses. You know what destroys the foundations? Indifference. A house divided against itself cannot stand. It's a slap in the face to those that are faithful. For those who claim they're saved, claim to be body, part of the body of Christ, claim to uh, be an active church member, but only show up every now and then and expect you to carry their load for them. That's Christian socialism, and God hates it. You're to carry your own burden. You're to bear your own burden. You're to pull your own rope. You're to tout your own load. I don't know about you. But Tommy, do your load ever get heavy? Every day it gets heavy. So does that leave you any room to carry somebody else's load too? No. But that Christian socialist crowd says, oh, Brother Tommy, you can handle it because my show's on tonight. what they're saying oh it's bad weather yeah but somebody needs help huh? it amazes me how careless we are towards the things of Christ some of the greatest Christians I've ever read after they dreaded facing him judgment day because they all knew they could have done more this day and age we, we face we, we live in folks they don't care but there's a payday coming and they're going to face him I want to be honest with you I'm not looking to fa forward to facing him hmm. we're all going to stand and give an account of the deeds done in this body, whether they be good or evil. And the Bible says where much is given, much is required. Now I don't know about other Christians that don't sit in a Bible preaching church that don't, don't get to teach and preach and we've had done. But I know around this crowd, God's given us much. Yeah. Amen. And there's much requirement for that. See, faithfulness and being uh, unshakable and unmovable and steadfast is a lot more than just coming to church. Yes. Praying every day, seeking God every day, being a light every day, being a witness every day, showing people that Jesus does make a difference. Sure. There's a whole lot to that. I wonder how many 
are truly righteous? How many will contend? How many will stay close to the cross? How many, my dear friends, will be careful for nothing, be concreted in? How many? How many is just going to sit back and continue to watch the foundations being destroyed? You see, I've seen a lot in my 45 years of being saved. 40 years ago, I didn't ever dream that the churches across America would be as anemic as they are. Would you, Brother Bob? We never dreamed it. I know of churches right now that had preachers for years pastors that preached the word of God taught the word of God put the word of God in them you'd think only for something to happen to him him retire or God forbid pass away or God call him somewhere else that same church that under that preaching for years would select personality over substance and put people in the pastor who don't even believe the King James Bible I've seen it. I'm thinking of individuals right now that were taught this book that tonight are sitting in churches that don't even use this book and they don't see anything wrong with it. So what were they doing the whole time the book was being taught? They were letting the foundations be destroyed because they really didn't care. Because to some, church is just a social club. I got news for you. The church is a living organism of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're all parts of his body. It ought to mean something to us. Christianity ought to mean something to us. Being an American ought to mean something to us. Living in Kentucky ought to mean something to us. So don't you think we've seen enough foundations destroyed? Anytime time we step up, get on our knees, start seeking God, and start making a difference. Because that's the only thing that's going to change. Do you know why they have hated our president for three years, the media and everybody else? Because he dares to go against the grain, and he's trying to change things. I don't know why the man does it. I mean, he's a multi-billionaire. You know, why does he put it? You know why? Because he loves America. Hmm? Now listen, we ought to love America, love our community, and love our church enough to make a difference. Hmm? God help us to see the foundations made great again. You know the only one stopping it from happening? Us. Say, I can't do much. Do what you can. You can pray. You can live a life that pleases God. You can be right with God. Just do those things. You'll start making a difference. God help us. We see the foundations eroding. I could have went on for hours. Everything's going on wrong in this world. Why don't we choose to make a difference? The foundations be destroyed. What will the righteous do? That's a charge. That's not a cop out. That's not saying, well, the righteous going to sit around and twiddle their fingers. Oh, no, God's dead. No. David said, I'll just put my trust in the Lord. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Time goes on another 20 years. What's Emmanuel Baptist Church going to be like? That's not decided then. That's decided now. And what foundations we continue to secure. God help us to do our part for this generation and the generation to come. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, get us on. I'm picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, this world's in a mess, but that don't mean our life has to be in a mess. Don't mean our church has to be in a mess. Don't mean our home has to be in a mess. We serve a great God. Help us truly put our trust in Thee. God, help us to truly make a difference. Help us to stand up and be counted for. 
I'm reminded of what you told Ezekiel. You sought for a man to stand in the gap and make up a hedge. Help us to be that man. Help us to be the gap stopper. Help us to truly make a difference. Lord, we live in a wicked day, but that don't mean our day has to be wicked and our life has to be wicked. We can live righteously and please God. And we can make a difference in somebody else's life. Continue to bless our church, bless these people. And God give us a burden to contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Bless now this time of invitation. Bless your people. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.